General and Mrs. Sterling, uh, Colonel Fofi, Colonel and Mrs. Iverson, uh, fellow commanders, Colonel Wallace, uh, Command Sergeants Major, fellow Wolverines, welcome to the ceremony which marks this unit's transition from a unit preparing for war to a battalion deploying to Iraq to build and fight in support of American and Iraqi forces. Company XOs, have your soldiers stand at ease. Stand at ease. Bend your knees. Thanks. I'd first like to uh, thank the soldiers standing on the field for their work in preparing for this ceremony and the 399th Army Band. At the end of this review, you're going to get to hear uh, the debut of the Wolverine March, which won't get much airtime on KFLW the fort, but I like it. <laughs> Getting a unit this big ready for deployment is a big job, and we didn't get to the state of readiness that we're in without the help from outside of the battalion. I'd like to take a minute here to thank a few of those whose dedication and hard work made it possible for to get where we are today. First, uh, to the MILFO, the Military Personnel Office, and Mr. Ben Twig especially, for almost single-handedly tripling the size of this battalion in the last 12 months. To the Department of Logistics, especially Ms. Barbara Butler, for taking on the burden of transferring millions of dollars of stay-behind Army equipment and for coordinating all the planes, trains, and buses needed to get 700 soldiers from Fort Leonard Wood to Kuwait in good order over the next few days. Thanks also to Colonel Iverson and Command Sergeant Major Falonico for mentoring the officers and NCOs of this unit and getting our equipment operators, plumbers, electricians, the extra training they needed in order to be, be ready when we, needed, when we needed to be ready. I'd also like to thank Lieutenant Colonel Joel Cross from the 5th Engineer Battalion, who when he found out that I needed three extra medics to go with me, he called me on the phone and asked uh, if he could drop them off by noon, if that was soon enough. That is the kind of support deploying units get on this installation, and it is incredible. This battalion has many friends in the local community, but I'd like to say a special thanks to Command Sergeant Major Retired Merle Jones and the Friends of the Fort and to BFW Post 3168 for all the time and money they have put into the, their personal sponsorships of, of this battalion. They put in as much enthusiasm into the care of our soldiers now as they did when they were still in uniform. I can't thank you enough. To the many families that we have standing in attendance today, your mission is tough, maybe tougher than the one we have. You get to be mom and dad, den mother, soccer coach, and fishing buddy for the next 15 months. You will be lonely, but you will not be alone. Everyone from Captain Jody, who commands the rear detachment, Trisha Murphy, who leads the greatest family readiness group in the U.S. Army, to General McCoy, who uh, commands this installation, has pledged that your care is their top priority. And that will allow us to focus solely on our mission in Iraq. Let me tell you about who we are first. There is a common grumble in every Army unit that sounds something like this. Man, we would be great if those idiots up at Platoon just could get it together. I'm here to tell you today that this battalion is ready for the mission that lays ahead of it. We consist of six companies totaling more than 700 soldiers. In our ranks are hundreds of carpenters, heavy equipment operators, dozens of electricians, plumbers, masons, mechanics, surveyors, civil engineers, cooks, and clerks. All of them have a common title, soldier, and they are all lethal with their weapons and proficient with their communication systems. The most advanced weapon systems and communication systems ever issued to a construction unit. Last week I was observing a company rifle range and from the tower I could tell that one soldier was particularly accurate, all the way out to 300 meters from the firing line. So I went down to the line to compliment the soldier, uh, the soldier's marksmanship, and when I asked the secret to the success, she responded, we had great pre-marksmanship training. What I didn't tell you was that range was conducted in the middle of the night and that her weapon, like most of the weapons in that company, had been modified with an infrared aiming laser, and she had night vision goggles strapped to her helmet. Folks, the days when construction units were at the bottom of the equipment fielding plan are over. The equipment that I have is state of the art. Our body armor is enhanced, and the construction equipment we will use in Iraq has all been professionally modified to provide protection to our operators from IEDs and snipers. We bring our soldier skills and army equipment to a hard mission. 
in our hard location. The unit we are replacing has been toughing it out in Iraq since July of 2006. They need us. Our mission, simply put, go anywhere, build anything. We will be operating out of bases all over northern Iraq and building platoon-sized patrol bases and checkpoints for U.S. and for Iraqi Army units and repairing roads and, that are, and repairing the roads that are being continually cratered by insurgents' IEDs. We will accomplish these missions side by side with Iraqi Army engineers and with Iraqi labor. If one of the objectives of this war we are engaged in is to rebuild Iraq, then this unit is the only Army unit capable physically of doing just that. No other Army unit can move the concrete necessary to secure a polling station in support of an election. No other Army unit can fix a sanitation system to prevent sickness. And few Army units have the capability to assist locals in building tangible examples of progress to these oppressed people and give them hope. And that hope, coupled with a return of law and order to these places, is what the brighter picture in Iraq looks like. To close this out, I'd like to steal a few lines from a letter to the troops written by one of this Army's greatest leaders. Soldiers, you are about to embark upon a great crusade towards which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming, overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Dwight Eisenhower, June 5th, 1944. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to all of you for what you do and for all your love for this army and for this unit and for your support of these soldiers. They are awesome. Wolverines, that's